collaboration with the ACLU, um, Reclaiming Our Democracy, which aims to educate the community about urgent threats to our civil liberties and our democracy, and to equip people to act. It is, um, I was thinking this morning, thinking about what I'd share with you today, and it, it's funny how on this day, when we're talking about police reform and freedom of speech, um, I was just on the phone twice this morning with our very own chief of police here in Richmond, um, Chief Alfred Durham, uh, twice this morning, spoke with him on the phone, and um, I was uh, reaching out to the chief um, to let him know that we at the Richmond Peace Education Center are planning to call a unity rally and march on September 16th. And September 16th, as some of you may know, is the day that a group calling itself the Confederate States of America is coming to Richmond to march without a permit. And um, the Richmond Peace Education Center has a very long-standing commitment to racial justice. Um, and we feel pulled by our conscience to provide a space for people to come together united in our diversity and to stand up at this particular historic moment um, when we are seeing nationwide an emboldened, emboldened um, white supremacist movement. So um, we will be calling for a nonviolent marching rally that day. Um, I wanted to call Chief Durham just to let him know um, and in sort of recognition that, especially after the events in Charlottesville, um, any police department I think would um, have some, you know, public safety concerns um, on a day like September 16th. And I appreciated that our chief seemed to understand our right to assemble and um, express our voices, um, even on what might be an unpredictable day from his perspective. Um, but I have to say, in making the call, and in looking forward to September 16th, I just want to share here on this um, annual meeting of the ACLU how much it means to us as an organization um, that does engage in peaceful protest activity to know that the ACL ACLU has our backs, um, to know that the ACLU is defending the space for dissent and for protest. Um, and while I don't anticipate facing you know, state suppression of our particular peaceful protest activities that day, um, I just know that for us and for many other groups and efforts, um, knowing that the ACLU has our backs and knowing that the ACLU is defending all of our rights to dissent, to speak out, to protest, um, is just so essential to our democracy. So I thank our partners for that. On the question of the day, um, police reform, the Peace Center is deeply concerned with really all of the different themes and specific um, reform topics that we will be surfacing today and that the panel of experts will be exploring. Um, the Peace Center is deeply concerned, in particular, about the militarization of our police. Um, in 2014, we all saw law enforcement in Ferguson, Missouri, responding to legitimate citizen protest activity equipped as if they were going to war. Those events, I think, put the militarization of the U.S. police into the national spotlight, um, ultimately led former President Barack Obama to issue an executive order um, banning the sale of certain military equipment to local police, which we saw as a good first step, insufficient but a good first step. We are alarmed that the current presidential administration has just announced 10 days ago that it will be reversing the Obama decision, um, opening sort of the floodgates to the rapid remilitarization of our local police forces, and it's a topic that we at the Richmond Peace Education Center have deep concerns about, and we see it as part of a larger trend toward the militarization of our society at large. We are also deeply concerned about the use of lethal force and excessive force and its disproportionate impact on communities of color. The Richmond Peace Education Center is deeply concerned more generally about um, racial disparities within the criminal justice system at large and our sort of racialized system of mass incarceration. And it's really personal for us and it's really relevant to the work that we do day to day in Richmond. We work with kids in communities um, Sometimes where most of the children um, have a father or an uncle or an older brother who is incarcerated and or otherwise caught up in the system at some level. Um, and we see every day, you know, the trauma of that separation um, from an incarcerated parent or a loved one and just the incredible stress, financial and otherwise, that places already vulnerable families in. At the Peace Center, I think we place questions of police reform maybe within sort of a broader frame in terms of our work and our community mission. 
Our mission is to build a just, inclusive, and nonviolent community. And for us, working for peace, peace education, means working to build a more peaceful and just, less violent community here in the Richmond region. And it means creating opportunities for the diverse young people of our region to be part of building that better future. So we um, teach programs on conflict resolution, teach people how to resolve their differences. We empower teenagers to be leaders for peace and community change. As just one example, we are launching a major new initiative in the Gilpin Court community. Um, the Gilpin Court Youth Peace Team will be giving 25 teenage residents of Gilpin Court, the city's largest housing court, the opportunity to become leaders for peace in their own community and to teach healthy conflict resolution and lead dialogues about policing and gun violence within the larger Gilpin community over the course of the next year or two. So um, for us, the most of the work we're doing day to day is really about equipping people to be empowered to create change within their own communities and to build healthier, more resilient communities within their own spaces. So we absolutely understand and believe that having accountable, respected, respectful, community-oriented, demilitarized, and fair policing, and police reform in general, is absolutely vital to our country, vital to the Commonwealth of Virginia, and we support the ACLU's reform agenda. At the same time, for us at the Peace Center, ultimately, we know that we cannot police our way to public safety and community safety. We cannot police our way there. We cannot arrest our way to public safety and well-being. We can't arm our way there. We can't militarize our way there. Um, we definitely cannot incarcerate our way there. And so we reject the idea that it's just the police's job alone to ensure public safety and to protect us. Um, that's letting the rest of us off the hook much too easily. Um, we believe we must empower communities, redistribute resources to those communities that have been left behind, address the deep architecture of racial and economic disparity that defines our region, and address and heal the traumatic legacy of white racial oppression that also defines our region. And we need to teach conflict resolution and build a culture of peace within our communities. So um, ultimately, public safety, community well-being, community resilience requires accountable, respectful policing, and it also demands much deeper work of all of us. Thank you.